So Emmett, when you made the decision to come back, is, is this year gone like you thought? No year ever goes exactly according to script, but has your experience been what you hoped it would be returning? Uh, I'd say it's been everything and then some. Obviously, you know, I wish we would have, you know, won in a couple more games and, you know, early on, but that's just the story of life and, you know, that's just how the season goes and everybody can be perfect and be undefeated and you wish you'd have zero in the second column, but that's just how basketball goes. So, you know, but on and off the floor has been, you know, all I could ever ask for coming back here. Um, I'm trying to keep my emotions on a, on a you know, level playing field. I don't want to get emotional too high, too low. So um, you know, I'm just looking forward to finishing it up with the guys and, you know, doing some damage in March. Having said that, um, senior day, what's it going to mean to you? I, mean, I can't even put it into words. Um, you know, last time they were out the carpet for me is, it means a lot more to me than, than a lot of people could ever understand. Um, playing here in front of everybody and, you know, all the fans, you know, the people here are just so nice, you know, they're so kind, the way they can approach you. I'll be in a, a store or grocery store and they'll come up to me and, you know, I'll have a 10 minute conversation in a Kroger and I just went there to go get breakfast stuff. You know what I mean? So you can't, you can't exchange that for anything. You know, I mean, that's those are things that you, you know, you take down the road. And, you know, I'll tell my kids one day about all those times where I did that or after the games were over and I went up and, you know, a little kid that I've never met before ran and jumped into my arms like he's known me his whole life. So, you know, those those kind of moments with the people here and, you know, this state has, has meant so much to me. Um, this is really a second home to me. And, you know, hopefully later down the line, I can go get a property on Chi Lake and be right out on that water in the summer. and. You know, I'll see the guys on the team going by in a boat, and just how I did when I was younger, just how I did now. So, it's, call me when you do. You know, <laughs> you might be right there with me. So, yeah, you yeah. know, but senior night's going to be fun. I'm excited. Hey, Emma, do you have family coming up? Yeah, my mom's here. My dad's here. My sister's always been here. Yeah, uh, my right. brother's here. I got a couple of family members from New Jersey. I'm on my dad's side of the family that'll be out here. So, it'll be a lot of people. Only I think four are going to walk out with me. Four right. or five, but I'm going to have some family in the crowd. Go through senior day last year. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Is, I mean, comparing emotions with that. Well, I mean, still, I'm sure it was emotional there, mm -hmm. but is it going to be different? Uh, it, it'll be different in the fact of you know last year was me, you know, celebrating just four years of college, mm -hmm. um, not really celebrating necessarily where I was at and you know the things I've done there. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to go back and play at the University of Washington. So. Thank you to Coach Hopkins and the rest of the staff for that. Um, but I just think, you know, senior night here is its going to mean a lot more to me just because, like I said, this is a second home to me. Um, I've been here since I was 18. You know, they took me in as a, you know, as a child. And, you know, I'm sitting up here as a man today. And, you know, life has taken me all across the world. Uh, basketball has been able to take me to Spain. I've been to Cancun with the team. Um, you know, just the, the relationships I've built with my teammates here and the staff is it's irreplaceable. So, you know, I just I'm thankful for all of it. And then flashback to the fall, you said uh, that's why you came back because you wanted to hear your name on senior night in the Coliseum. Has it kind of set in yet that this is the end of the journey? Like tomorrow's the last time you're going to go step on that floor? Uh, I've, I've been trying not to think about it. Me and Kedrin have been talking about it a lot. Kedi, sorry, he gets mad when I call him Kedrin. Um, <laughs> We've been talking about it probably for the last week where we sit there and, you know, we'll be in the Xbox party about to start a rec game in 2K and we'll be like, man, our last game is next Saturday. So, you know, just I'm trying to keep the emotions low and, you know, we have we still have business to handle. Uh, this is obviously a huge game for us. So, you know, when they do call my name out and I have to walk out there, you know, I might tear up a little bit, I might cry, but at the end of the day, we still got a game to play and we know how important this game is to us and, you know, what we're trying to do in March. So. You know, it's, I have to keep a business approach with this game, and you know I'm going to try my best to do that. Talk a little bit about the journey from that kid that, to the man that you are now, and uh, the most important lessons you probably learned, and maybe any regrets you might have had to, through the time. Um, I don't think I'd say there was any regrets. I think um, everybody's life is mapped out already before it's, you know, before it started. I think. 
you know, kind of just giving credit to God and, you know, the journey. It is it is what it is, and it's supposed to be what it's going to be. And, you know, you can't change any of, any of that. And so, you know, just the journey's been crazy. It's been up and down. I've, you know, like I said, I've been all over the place. You know, you get mental fatigue, physical fatigue, no matter what. It's, you know, you have to persevere through that and find a way to, you know, wake up the next day and just deal with it, I think. The main thing that I learned to do over my time is, you know, take life one day at a time and don't take anything for granted. Um, you know, the seasons are long, um, but they do go by very, very fast. And, you know, I'm pretty sure other basketball players can attest to that or any other college athlete. So, you know, just taking it one day at a time, making sure you value those days and stacking your days up, I think, is probably the number one thing that I've learned and applied over the time in college. And had your how'd your sister end up? school here so <laughs> this is a funny story right. so I was here I think it was what that would have been my sophomore year around then and she was going through filling out her applications to all of her schools and I think she got accepted into Miami of Ohio she was supposed to go to the University of Washington or that's where I wanted her to go personally because I thought that's just right up the street from home and that'd be more comfortable for her and so she applied to the University of Washington, but she sent her application, I think, a day late. So obviously at Washington, they're not allowing you to go to school if you, you, know, you send your application in late. So she did her application here, and she was like, we could make it just like high school. Remember, we used to go to class together all the time, da 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 da, da. I'm like, oh, no, I don't, I'm not sure how I feel about this. But, you know, she ended up making that decision on her own to, to come out here and you know, I, I let her make that decision, and I tried not to step in and say, you know, you should go here or here, do what you want to do the same way I made my decision to go to college. And, you know, she loves it here. Um, she despises going home. She would love to just be here year-round. So she's kind of just like me, I guess. Was it difficult to leave, knowing that she was here, looking forward to being with you, and then all of a sudden you've got to do what you got to do? I didn't stop you, but did it weigh in your decision, though? Yeah, definitely. I mean, she used to call me. Well, before I left the first time, you know, just me hanging out with her and stuff, she would be like, I wish you weren't leaving. And, you know, this is before I had put my name in the transfer portal. Obviously, I talked to her about it and stuff, and we had those conversations. And she was always just like, I wish you would stay. Like, please stay. Da, da, da. And then, you know, fast forward to when I'm at Washington, she called me a couple of times. She'd be, you know, upset that I wasn't here. And, you know, Maybe not that her watching me play was the reason, but just me being around and hanging out. You know, that's my best friend. Um, I said this yesterday. My dad always told me, you know, to no matter what happens, take care of my sister just because you never know what can happen with my two parents, just, you know, with age and everything. So, you know, my main thing and my main priority in life is, you know, taking care of my family. And my little sister is like my best friend. So, you know, I'll do anything and everything to make sure she's okay. How did this team get turned around? Obviously, you know the, the losing streak in the early portion of the conference season, problems. Then you were close, but how how did things get turned around? Um, I think we lost a couple games off of you know one to two plays, and you know basketball is a game that can be dictated off of those one to two plays, and you know whether it's you know one play that could lead to a run or a play at the end of the game that can just lead to a game winning shot or you know whatever the case is, but. You know, I think our team just realized what's been at stake. And, you know, for us, we have a lot of seniors and a lot of guys that don't want to miss March Madness. I was fortunate enough to play in it, obviously. We only made it to the round of 32, and I would love to get to a Final Four. And, you know, all these guys on the team, they want to know what it feels like to play in March. And, you know, I think once we've all sat there, we had team meetings, and, and we've talked about what we want to do as a team. It's, it's kind of been night and day, you know, in practice. Practice has been way more intense. It's been way more competitive. Um, so, you know, that's obviously going to translate right over to the game. And, you know, when we get into the game, we get into the timeouts, you know, those little huddles that we have on a free throw, you know, we'll say we're going to win this game, you know, no matter what. You know, it's, everybody has to do something to win, whether it's the last guy on the bench cheering as hard as he can or, you know, Eric scoring 30 points a game, <laughs> whatever it takes for us to win. You know, I think everybody's willing to play their role and play their part in that. I mean, you, you said you went to one NCAA tournament, but you could have gone to two. You were on the COVID team. That you got robbed. National championship. <laughs> it was a good team. Do you think about that, and then and maybe kind of think about you know where you are right now and what is still in front of you? Um, you know, I, I think about. I honestly think about that team a lot. You know, just that team, how you know explosive we were on offense, yeah. and I think our our team defensively was just insane. We had Jermaine and 
six eight point guard, and then you had Deuce, and he was able to play off the ball, and that's just like you can't really guard that. There's nothing you can do because you got me, Oscar, and Derek out there as well. So the lineup was six seven and up, and then you got Deuce who plays like he's seven foot. So um, you know you fast forward to now. Without the COVID year, I wouldn't be able to be here. So right. you look at that, my career would be done in college. Um, but I just know what it's like for everything to be taken away from me. And, you know, when you feel like you have a team that can go do something special and obviously things happen so fast and the world kind of just paused on its own. So I just know that this is my last time I'll be able to play in the tournament and I want to get there and I want to make it as far as I can. So hopefully we can cut down the nets at the end and. I honestly don't care about anything else. Hey man, I'm kind of interested in your opinion, having gone through the portal thing twice now. Um, I don't want to put this. Uh, there, there, there's a from a from a fan standpoint, I guess is the best way to put it. There's always a a natural energy, excitement whenever new guys start coming into a team and things like that, and you know. Uh, problems get fixed and this guy's going to take over for, you know, you know, this and that. Is it that easy, though? I mean, having gone through it twice now, uh, are there misconceptions, I guess, with the whole portal, uh, you know? Like with everybody, like the public view? Yeah, uh-huh. as opposed to maybe how it actually ends up. As a player. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the public view of it is, you know, people have that, they have that mindset that, you know, leaving where you're at is 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 weak. I guess would be the word to use. And they say that you know, if if it doesn't work in one place, it's not going to work in another place. Or you know, this, that, and the third about going into the transfer portal. And the transfer portal was put in place for people that might have situations like me, or a person that just it didn't work out on the basketball floor and they wanted to go somewhere else. Um, I think the transfer portal is a great thing. I I don't see anything wrong with it. I'm not a fan of the, the waiver situation and how that has to be handled because, you know, one guy's reason to leave could be because of a coach getting fired, like with Jose's situation and having the athletic director have to sign on the waiver. And the athletic director has nothing to do with Jose and the basketball program. I mean, obviously, kind of, but not, you know, not really. Um, I think that would probably be like the only thing I would maybe change just because I feel like that shouldn't be, your future shouldn't be dictated by. A person that you don't see anymore, or you're not around. Um, I think just the ability for guys to leave and go somewhere new and blossom. There's a lot of guys that transfer places and blossom and turn into, you know, draft picks, and they're able to change their families' lives. So, the transfer portal is a blessing and it's a curse. Um, you can have teams that load up and stack up players, and that's going to leave some other teams in the dust. But I think that's sort of what this whole NIL and yeah. you know all that stuff is change the game it's it's a way different game and it's not pay to win but it's almost like you know who can do what to get the best team and you know I think over the next couple years you'll see that shift in the sport is you know those bottom feeder teams are going to fall off a cliff and those teams that are up here are going to you know continue to excel I guess kind of along those lines I mean but you know say a program you know on a yearly basis they're going out and getting you know whatever four or five six guys that doesn't necessarily guarantee success though yeah. right I mean th- there are uh, I don't know uh, limits I don't know if that's the right word or not but, the, but just because you're bringing in a bunch of older guys it, it takes it still takes time yeah yeah definitely I mean it's a it's basketball at the end of the day so I mean you do have those teams early on like in this season you saw those teams that had guys that were out of school for four years and they all basically went through the process together and yeah those smaller schools were knocking off the top schools early on the season just because those schools brought in a bunch of transfers and they weren't adjusted to playing with each other and everybody kind of has a new role. So I think just it has a little bit to do with, you know, the, the players and their ability to buy in, um, how much they hang out, the team bonding, you know, your coaching is going to play a factor. There's, there's a bunch of things that play factor into that. And, you know, you as a team, you just have to buy in. And as a player, you have to be willing to sacrifice, you know, X, Y, and Z to, for the glory, I mean, to win games. And, you know, I think that's something our team did early. And, you know, that's why we didn't drop any of those games early to those teams that, you know, might have had a, a team full of juniors and seniors. But we had so much talent here and we have a great coaching staff. And, you know, I think just 
our ability to, you know, come together and win games, is, especially just over this last month, has been phenomenal. So. Well, I mean, go talk about Eric. I mean, obviously you two played together growing up, and then tomorrow you guys are both closing kind of the, the book at the same time, same place. How much does that mean to you both? Um, our last high school game was against each other. So our last college game was with each other. So that's something that is hilarious. Um, it's It's been a journey. Um, just the way me and him have grown up, you know, going from us being at an AAU program where, you know, we were, you know, we weren't really looked at. You know, there was always a guy or two that were ahead of us, and those guys got most of the shots, and those guys, you know, were, were the image of the program where we were at. And, you know, shout out to my AAU coach, Carl Howe. He, he put together an AAU program and said, I want you and Eric to come be the leaders of this program. And, you know, we want you to come out of Washington with a, you know, Division One scholarship to go play somewhere. And, you know, me and Eric talked back and forth about that. And we didn't, we weren't sure if that's what we should do because we were with this program since we were kids all the way up to high school. And, you know, me and him both made that decision to go over there. And, you know, me and him have been very, very close ever since. And, you know, Eric's, Eric's fiery. He's a competitor. We all know we're getting out of Eric. And, you know, he's, he's a goofball off the floor. And, Obviously, you guys don't know, but he's that's just how he is off the floor. He's you know, what you see on the floor is it's a complete opposite off the floor. So, you know, when he gets into the onto the floor and gets in between those lines, he turns on that competitor side, and it's almost like a not a mirror image, it's like a complete flip of the person. And then he gets off the floor, and he's like my best friend. So, I mean, I can't really you know describe it. That's my dude, and you know, probably until. You know, the, we go to the grave. We're gonna be hanging out, having conversations, talking about you know stuff. And we were talking about during the Kansas game. I think it was after the last media timeout, and I just had that feeling we were gonna win because that was the closest I've ever been playing in Lawrence. And I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me, and we're like this. And I'm like, we're about to win. We're gonna win in Kansas. We're gonna be able to say we did this for the rest of our lives. And obviously, it didn't go how we wanted it to go. But just having those experiences with him playing in big games here and you know, I'm, I wouldn't replace with anything else. Did you win that game in high school? No, he beat me. <laughs> Still mad about it. But it was the last game. I was playing with a broken wrist. Like, right. that's really the only reason they won. <laughs> along, along the lines of the portal, uh, different though, and NIL, how did that change your experience as a college athlete? Um, I think my NIL experience is going to be different from a lot of other Athletes experience just because of the fact that NIL didn't get introduced until I was a senior. So um, I think the way NIL is and the way that it can affect, you know, people, I think it's it's a blessing and a curse. You know, like I said earlier, you got you got guys that could potentially be driving two hundred thousand dollar cars on a college campus versus a guy that might drive just a you might drive a 1999 Honda, you know what I mean? So it kind of sets apart. It sets, well, it, it just, it sets apart, you know, player and player, and you don't really want to get that, get that all mixed up. And so that's probably like one of the one things that I don't like about it. But just for my sake here and, you know, being here this year, Country Road Trust did an amazing job. Um, you know, we there was many opportunities that we had, you know, where there was just hanging out with the fans at, you know, football tailgate. And you know, getting out in the community and doing something, and you know, just I guess being able to be rewarded for that, and I I can't replace that with anything. That's you know, being able to finally be compensated to do something, and you know, the the amount of money that we generate for the NCAA year after year is the numbers going up. I think it's something in the billions probably this year, and you know, I think some of that money could be spread back within the athletes, but. You know, you got people like or groups like the NIL collectives and all these other schools. You know, Texas Tech has a really good collective. We have a really good collective. Um, you know, so when you just look at how that goes, I think it's going to be really good in the future. And just I look forward to when I get older one day, you know, donating some money to Country Road Trust and being like, give this, spread this between the athletes. I don't really care what you do with it or what you have them do. But, you know, I just I know what it was like to be in school without NIL, and I know what it's like to be in school with it. And Having an IL, having those opportunities makes college a lot more peaceful for an athlete. You know, like you're saying, the NIL thing came along late in your career. So, I mean, so for the most part, majority, 
you were a college kid, a college athlete, college experience. Um, do you almost kind of uh, shudder to think what the college experience will be 10 years from now, 15 years from now? Kind of going off what you were saying earlier, will it eventually get to a point where college teams are you know, buying championships, which obviously that's not the way it's been. It's going to be a, a whole flip. Ten years from now, I, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. Um, ten years from now, you never know what the professional rules will change to with just the NBA and the the eighteen year old draft rule, and you never know they might take that out of the out of the mix. So um, it'll definitely be pay to win ten years from now. Uh, I think because you're going to have guys going from the opportunity to go get drafted in college or straight out of high school, or now they have overtime elite. And they have the G League Ignite program. So there's so many different ways for guys to get to the NBA now that I think colleges are going to have to eventually adjust to that. And if I have the opportunity to go make 500000 to go play one season in the G League before I go to the NBA, it's like, okay, if I go to college, a college is going to have to offer me that amount of money to go there. So that's going to be the big flip-flop going into the you know probably the next couple of years. Um, you know, even look at guys like Scoot Henderson. He's, in, he think he did two years with the G League tonight, right. and it was two year, one million dollar deal. So he's getting five hundred thousand a season. But he could have went anywhere in the country to play college, and he would have been the number one pick or number two pick had he went to a college. So it's gonna, it's gonna shift. Everything's gonna shift, and everybody's just gonna have to be ready to adjust. Emma, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Emma.